What is up, tubers? Welcome back to a sealed here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash newmot for all your magic card needs. We've got some early access Thunder Junction, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So this is an event sponsored by Wizards. They've invited some creators to play in this event. This is not available yet uh, for the general public. But we get to the, a first look at the, the format. So I've done one draft of this format now on stream, and now I'm going to try to record as much as I can because this is an actual short event. But we're going to jump into a sealed to start um, as it gives us more time to, to read the cards and whatnot. So let's take a peek at our rares. And once again, there are a bunch of bonus sheet stuff you can open. Some of them not so good, like Skullcrack, although others like Path to Exile, just extremely good. Let's see here. We open two of these Wily Dukes. 4-2 Vigilance for 3. Whenever it becomes tapped, you gain a life and draw a card. So that's more of a constructed quality card, I would think, right? Unless there are some random ways that you can tap creatures in this format. Stoic Sphinx. This card's amazing. Really, really pushed for limited. 4-mana 5-3 Flash Flyer. Has Hexproof as long as you haven't cast a spell this turn. So it has Hexproof a lot of the time. Um, this comes down as early as turn four. Like sometimes there are going to be games in this format. I'm sure somebody just plays this on turn four. They never need to cast another spell. They just hit for five Hexproof flying and that's going to end it. So kind of a stupid card. Especially good if you can get a lot of instants. But just really, really amazing. Railway Brawler, 5 mana, 5, 5, Reach, Trample. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield in your control, put X counters on it, where X, is, this card's insane as well. Plot is a new mechanic in Thunder Junction. Um, you can see what it right there. You can pay the plot cost, exile the card, and then on a later turn, you can cast it on a sorcery without paying the mana cost. So it is really, really gross. Like, you plot this on turn four, you play it on turn five for free, and then you play another creature. I can't imagine a game where um, you do that and, you know, you're very likely to lose. This card is an absolute bomb. Okay, let's take a peek at the other stuff we have. Um, oh, yeah, Spree is a new thing in this format as well. It's kind of these modal type cards where a card has a base casting cost of, as for example here, a blue. And then if you pay the spree costs, you get different effects. And you can pay all of them if you want to, or you can just do an individual one. So the base here would be cancel for three mana or draw two, discard one for three mana. But then, of course, you can get other modes as well. So good scaling cards. Let's take a peek at our commons and uncommons. I'm not going to spend too much time going over the commons and uncommons because I'd rather just jump into the games, especially um, since... Matches take a long time to queue up for in the early access event. There's just not many people playing, but we'll read the cards here. So here's a spree card. This is a flicker effect, and then destroy a target creature if no other creature has greater power. That's just a good removal spell with save. Two damage to attacking or blocking creature. Four damage to that creature. If you control the mount as you cast it. That's like okay removal. This is actually pretty good removal. Destroy an artifact or creature as controller makes a 2-2 two, two white ox. Destroy a tapped creature, gain 2 life. ETB, look the top 5 cards, reveal a mount or planes from among... Okay, that's good. So Saddle is a new another ability here. It's kind of like crew. Uh, it's sorcery speed only, and if the creature is saddled, it generally gets some type of effect. This one gains first strike and you scry one, so pretty good for a 2-drop. The Holy Cow, 3-mana, 2-2 two, two flash flyer. ETB gain two life and scry one's great. I don't know how to feel about this. Um, three mana, it auto equips. Whenever equip creature ta attacks, tap target creature defending player controls and then equip cost is two. So this does enable crime very, very easily. And uh, let's see if I can find a crime card real quick. Mm, lots. Is this a crime one? No. Where's a crime card to show what crimes do? Why can't I find a crime? Crime, crime, crime. <laughs> there, there is another new mechanic called crime here. But for some reason, I cannot find a card with crime on it. Do we not actually have a crime card? 
Oh, we might not actually have any crime cards. Okay, well, interesting. In any case, um, targeting your opponent's things is valuable. Let's put it that way. Here's a plot card. I'm going to say it right now. I'm guessing the vast majority of plot cards are just really good because of their versatility. So this can shrink a creature or draw two cards for spree. This shrinks a creature. You always draw a card, and it can shrink the creature for more if you have an outlaw. Outlaws are assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks. So a lot of different creatures can qualify for that. Target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. Untap that creature until end of turn becomes a copy of up to one other target creature. That's not bad. 3 mana, 2, 3 ETB. An instant or sorcery in your graveyard gains flashback. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. And it has plot, so snapcaster mage that you can potentially cast for free. Lone Shark's great. The Sphinx is good. Like These flash-type cards are super good with the, the Sphinx, right? It's a flash removal spell, so you can cast them on your opponent's turn and then not have your uh, not have them um, susceptible to like sorcery speed removal. Let's see, sack draw two two life link with value for two, three four menace that can get bigger, and it also can make a treasure. Consuming ashes four mana exile that can also get you some surveil value. One less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. When it enters the battlefield, any number of target opponents each discard a card for each of those opponents who didn't discard a card with a mana value 4 or greater draw. How much would this need to cost to be playable? 4 for sure. 5 would be a little bit expensive. It's probably fine. 2 damage to each outlaw creature. Two damage to each non-outlaw creature. That's good. Two mana, one, three reach. Deals one damage to target opponent for one. That's great. It enables very easy uh, crime. Irascible Wolverine. Some more plot cards. Two mana, three, three. As long as you control a creature with power four or greater, it can attack as though it didn't have defender. Search your library for a basic land or desert, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. And then the plus three spree is make an XX where X is the number of lands you control. Three mana to get a land from your deck is not great, but the th big spree cost is all right. Four mana, four, four vigilance. Whenever it attacks while saddled, put a one, one counter on target creature that's saddled. That's pretty good. Obviously, our brawler is nuts. Oh, and I think this card is one of the best green commons. Five mana, five, four trample that gains three when it enters. That type of creature has always been fantastic, but it's got the plot cost of four, so really good. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, you make a one, one vampire rogue creature token with lifelink. This ability triggers only once each turn. Sack another creature or artifact, draw a card. That's pretty nice. If you have enough ways to make tokens. Two damage to any target. If you've cast another spell this turn, draw a card. That's decent. Jolene is a three mana, four, two. Whenever you attack with one or more of a creature with power four or greater, you make a treasure, and that qualifies itself. And then you can sack a treasure to deal one to any target. That's great. Four, four, reach. Ward two for four. Beginning of combat on your turn. Other creatures you control with power four or greater gain trample. That's great. Eartha Joe, what is this? Four mana, two, four. ETB, you make a one, one. Whenever you activate an ability that targets a creature player, copy that ability. Whoa. Oh, activate ability. That's still very good. Deserts are a thing in this format as well. Let's see. Mobile Homestead has haste as long as you control a mount. Look at the top. If it's a land, you may put it on the battlefield tapped. Might not be bad. Okay, I think we have to play green in some capacity, and then from there we have to decide. It might just be red-green beats, because we have some nice red-green stuff as well. I don't have that much uh, good fixing. Like here are our red-green lands. So we do have two blue land fixers, and then the uh, Mirage Mesa can also help. But my best blue card is double blue, so that's not really splashable. 
Could try like green blue. Maybe. I have a couple of uh dance the tumbleweeds that can also help splash, but I'm not sure that's all that good. My white has some individually good cards. Might be worth it to splash path to exile and maybe nothing else out of white. I guess we could splash the Earth of Joe too if we wanted to. Whenever you activate an ability that targets a creature or player, activate ability. See, that's that's what makes it probably not worthwhile. Because a lot of these things aren't activated, they're like triggered abilities, you know. Much more interested in playing the games than actually trying to build the most optimal deck to begin with. That's always been my case in these early access events. Let's take a peek at red, green, so Gruel splashing the uh, the uh, Path to Exile, maybe. This actually looks pretty good to me. In fact, I don't even know if we need to splash the Path. How many mounts do I have in my deck? Three for these double mobile homesteads? It's probably okay. These Dance the Tumbleweeds probably aren't worth it. Maybe one for the Path to Exile, but with Abraded Bluffs plus Mirage Mesa, that's two pieces of fixing. We have Gold Pan that makes a treasure that's three pieces. Any other treasure? Jolene makes treasure. Yeah, I might not need these dance of the tumbleweeds and that would be 23 right there I like that just red green beats splashing path to exile get the mirage mesa we get the abraded bluffs again if i had more cards that cared about crime it would make it to make it worth it probably splashing some of these off color lands but oh is this a rare one? Oh, that's blooming marsh oh i didn't even notice it's not even one of the canyons or the caves or whatever deserts yeah, let's go with something like this. And go play a little bit of sealed action here. We'll try to jump into the draft, but like I said, the matches have been taking a long time to queue up, so hopefully this goes quickly. But yeah, see you back for round one. All right, here we are for round one of this Thunder Junction sealed, and it looks like we're playing against Graham. From loading ready run. We have an okay looking opener. Give him the all good game. Conduit pylons. Right. So we can go Roadrunner attack for two. Probably gonna wanna plot our Wolverine for the extra card value. What is this? Intrepid Stable Master. 2 2 reach, add a green, add two mana of any one color, spend this only to cast a vehicle or a map. Wow, that card's very good. Sheesh. Well, that's kind of gross. It's a great two drop. We just need to find our rhino or whatever it's called. Trepid Stable Master. I'm going to say right now, I might cut um, these sealed off quick because of how long it's actually taking to fire them. What is this? Fortune Loyal Steed, 3 mana, 2, 4, Beast Mount, ETB Scry 2. When it attacks while saddled, at end of combat, exile it and one creature that's saddled is turned then return. Okay, so it can flicker. So now it's a 3-5. Well, we are kind of getting wrecked here. It hit a land at least is good. Two damage to each outlaw creature. Two damage to each non-outlaw. Um, so we'll just play out a 4-2. I 
this cut in the crossfire is a little bit awkward in our deck. <laughs> Assassin, mercenary, pirate, rogue, and warlock. Come on, draw our big legendary, or not legendary, is it mythic? Big mythic. All right, Graham's going to plot an outcaster trailblazer. Three mana, four, two, enters, add one mana of any color. Whenever another creature with power four greater enters the battlefield, you control, draw a card. It's really good as well. Okay, let's rummage away a land here. I don't mind trading for the 5-3. We still trample over for a little bit of damage as well. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Maybe I don't want him to trade because we have caught in the crossfire. Wait, is this a rogue? Oh, it's a warlock. Never mind. That was, in fact, an outlaw. What is this thing? Six mana, four, five, flash. Enters the battlefield if you cast it. Return a permanent with mana value three or less from your graveyard to battlefield tapped. When it becomes tapped, exile the top two cards. You may play the... Okay, we are just very dead. <laughs> His deck looks great. His draw is great. What on earth? That's nuts. Oh, did he mess up? Wait. Oh, is this a cast trigger? Oh, this is a cast trigger. Didn't draw a clear shot, which helps. That is a druid. So we equip here. Shoot that. Do two to each non-outlaw creature. Wait. Why can't I pay the red here? Oh, because it's three mana to do that. Right, I messed up. Or rather, I thought I could do something I couldn't do. Right, it's not just... This is the base cost. Four damage to a creature if you control the mount. All right, well, that's unfortunate. The hell is this? 7-7 seven, seven, Reach Ward. Discard it from your hand. Search your library for basic land or desert. Put it into your hand, then shuffle. You gain three. Holy smokes. Okay. So I gotta go like this and pass. We can double block the armadillo and then caught in the crossfire to wipe all of the two toughness creatures. We'd still be fighting against the fortune, but that gives us a small chance. Maybe? Yeah, I mean, I have to double block this and go for it. All right. It's a pretty clean looking board for the most part. I still need a little bit of help here, obviously.
Mill three, and then put a land from among the milled into your hand. If you can't, you make a treasure. Okay. Ah, and then we drew a land anyways. Damn. Yeah, Graham's deck looked really good. All right, starting off things with a loss. That's okay. We have more chances. We'll see you for uh, round two. <laughs> uh, Graham messaged me after that game. And now I gotta play this mofo again. <laughs> All right, take two, take two. <laughs> We're playing against Graham again. At least we know his deck. Oh, we drew Jolene. Green here. Leave it to Graham to rub it in. Turn to Homestead. Has haste as long as you control a mount. Whenever it attacks, look at the top card. If it's a land, put it on the battlefield tap. Yeah, that card's pretty solid, honestly. Really good with tricks. All right. Well, now you know for sure not many people are playing sealed. If we're playing against Graham again, for example. There's his freaking trailblazer again. But we have a good... A good draw of our own, so... Not hit a land, sad. Yeah, so now he gets to play this for free, add a mana, and maybe cast like a 5-drop this turn. Kind of insane, actually. Can I draw my draw my rhino, please? All right, there's the outcast or yeah, outcaster. What you got? You know, I've seen this before. It's like a dream. Double top. And this is a 2-2, two -two, has double strike as long as you've committed a crime. There you go, committed a crime. Targeting opponents, anything they control and or cards in their graveyard is a crime. Um, I think we're supposed to attack with Jolene and have him... He's going to probably block with the Omen port, and then I get to clear shot the Trailblazer in two for one. If he doesn't block... Then I guess I just play my 4-4 four, four, reach ward two. This doesn't make mana anymore. It doesn't tap for mana itself, but it does still draw cards. It's kind of like we're playing best of three. Like, I would not be surprised if after this game finishes, we queue up into Graham again. Because like I said, there are just not many people playing sealed currently on the early access event. I don't know how many people are in the early access event, right? This is not open to the general public right now, but, um... Sus. But given it spans a bunch of time zones and whatnot, you have to imagine there, however many people are actually playing, um, is reduced. I could block with my homestead, but I'm just going to take the two here. Now, he can trigger um, the flicker, but that adds mana mid-combat.
So unless he has an instant here, he can't really utilize that extra mana, thankfully. Nice, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think we're still doing okay here with our particular draw this game. So he's holding up a trick, it feels like. Giant Beaver. Now this does have haste. Oh, you know what he has? He has the thing that deals four damage again. All right, well, we're just going to have to let that happen. Yep. So I think what we want to do here is force some issues, right? This is a pretty good clean board clear type effect. So trade, trade. Okay, I like that too. Keeping the Jolene is actually pretty sweet. Oh, that thing has first strike. Oh, that's what I'm missing. Right, okay. So that was a three for three. Gotcha. Right, right, right. First strike, or rather double strike as long as you've committed a crime. And he targeted my creature, so he did have a crime. That's what I missed. Other giant beaver was a really good draw again. Put a 1 1 counter on Jolene if we want to. Oh, wait. No, that doesn't have haste. I still think we attack with Jolene, though. Get the treasure. Okay, I think trade is fine, and we will go ahead and plot this highway robbery. Sacking a forest next turn is not problematic. The 6 5 Reach! That card's really good. The Cactarantula. Or Cacta. Yeah, Cactarantula. Haste protection from coyotes can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. Whenever it attacks while saddled, put a 1-1 counter on target creature that's saddled, so not itself. Let's plot here. Let's play the 3-3. Three, three. Say go. Yeah, we're still in this game. One card left in his hand. <sighs> I think I just take the hit. That's a fantastic draw. Saddles three. So let's saddle up and we can put a 1-1 one, one counter on the Wolverine. Saddling is sorcery speed only, notably. Trick shot, 6 damage, okay. It's fine. I think we actually sit back still.
He certainly wouldn't draw another good spell, would you, Graham? Could you not, Graham? <laughs> Three mana, three, three. Can't be blocked except by creatures with haste. And I do think we attack with our paladin because it either trades with the two small creatures or it trades with the spider. And I think both of those are good enough for us. I uh, I guess I'll play it out. I think there was merit in holding it, though, as a little bit of um, a get-you moment, right? Surveil one, okay. Left on top, it looks like. So that allows our bristle back to attack. So it's going to be trade, trade, take two, ideally. All right, I mean, this looks good. What did you top? 7-7? Seven, seven? What was that thing called? Pass, and that was a great draw. Must be a removal spell. Holy cow, gain to scry. Path saves us there. Oh, good thing I did play the land. Yes! All right, we even things up. Let's hope that we can get a rematch versus Graham for the full best of three experience. Because that would actually be kind of cool if that was uh, what happened here. So we will go on to our next game. Let's do it. All right, we did it. We got the full best of three experience here. Can't win a die roll to save my life, but... Uh, Let's do it. Turn to Homestead on the draw seems good. Oh god, he already has all his colors. So Peddler, discard a land, attack for three. Don't you dare plot your stupid 4-2 again. Okay, just the two, three, that's fine. So mills a planes, grabs a planes. Actually, hmm. Nice. Oh my god, we had the frickin' uh, land on top, but then I decided to do it in this order instead, huh? Oh no, wait, this is the order I had to do it in. Well, we can name white here, so I guess all's not lost. Giant beaver. Is this a fight? It does. Okay, so we go... Savagery. Attack for five. Hopefully hit a land on top. Man. Come on, homestead. Fortune again with a scry two. Puts on the battlefield tapped, yeah. Could path my own creature if I really wanted to. Now I think we definitely do that in response. I don't. I don't remember if he scryed top, but we also ruin his scry if that's what happened.
Might be better to attack for five here instead of getting the Wolverine online. God, I cannot hit a land. Ah. Hmm. Let's discard the Wolverine. We are putting a pressure on, and we can enable the four power claws on the sentry by using Clear Shot or Gold Pan next turn. Pass. Infinite mana pass. I'm not going to go for the kill here. I think it's way too risky to use clear shot into that much open mana. This is probably the six... Um, mana kill something. Oh, Annie Flash! Okay. Okay, that's fine. Now we get to clear shot here. Force a chump. He takes three. Nice. Okay, holding on. have haste too? No, it's reach. So, you go like this. You play the duelist. You equip the pan to it. Crew the homestead. Now you equip back to the sentry. Go to combat. We did it! We finally hit a land off the homestead. There we go. This is a warlock, so if he has the four damage spell, he does get to use it here. Okay, just was trick shot again. And fierce retribution, okay. He's kind of forced to trade since we have the dead eye duelist. But now he's living off the top and we have board presence. So, it's a 1-2 that searches for a land and can put it on top. He's not going to do that. And then it pumps for one. Hey, the Roadrunner. That's lethal. We equip, attack for three, ping for one. That's GG. Yes! We take the best of three victory. Suck on that, Graham. <laughs> Everything was worth it. All right. I will queue up again. Let's see if we can play a couple more games, but if they take too long, then I will just end it as it is and uh, get a recording, uh, another video recording for tomorrow. All right. Well, I think I've waited long enough here. I think a nice little best of three match versus Graham was enough. So we're going to call the video there uh, this time. That means I can record more and get some more content out for the uh, following days. So we're going to try to do a, do a draft here next. Hopefully it doesn't take as long. Again, this is the early access event, so there are fewer people playing. But uh, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully at least it was a little bit interesting of a sealed build. And we will bring it back tomorrow for a draft. Thanks for watching.